When Brian Sawchuk, the spiritual leader at Unity of Fort Lauderdale, shared with me that the community was looking at the Ten Commandments from the Hebrew Bible in a new way for today, in a, a perspective of looking at them as spiritual commitments that we could follow, I really liked the idea. I thought that it had a lot of merit for us to take a look at the value underneath the commandments and see what the underlying impetus for them were and what value we could commit to today in our own spiritual journey. So as we take a look at the Ten Commandments from the Hebrew Bible with a fresh perspective, we realize that the first three of the commandments were about how we related to God itself. Um, and for those of you who may need a refresher, the first commandment was you take no other gods before me, that you keep that which has given us life as the source of life. And the second is that we don't use the, the Lord God's name in vain. In other words, we, we, don't, we're, we keep it sacred and holy and we recognize its magnificence and its significance. And we just don't treat it without that same reverence from which um, the, the stature of it absolutely warrants. The third is to keep the Sabbath day holy, to take a time to rest in the busyness of our lives that we actually take time to renew because in that space, spaciousness of renewal, we breathe in and we receive something that's necessary for us to go back into the world and to create again. So that's the first three of the Hebrew Ten Commandments looked at from a spiritual commitment um, perspective. From this point forward, the fourth through the tenth commandments are all about how we interact with one another. Isn't it interesting? Three to get us connected with our source and to be in right relationship with that which gives us life, and then all the rest to teach us how to interact with one another. I think it's interesting that this kind of parallels Jesus' Christ's teachings in that there's two, two new commandments. One is to love the Lord your God with all your mind, your heart, and your spirit, verse three commandments from the Hebrew Bible, and the second is to love one another love one another. And, and so these, these four through 10 commandments really are, are coaching us. What does it mean to, to be in this state of well-being with one another? So let's look at the fourth commandment um, and see what that would look like. And it speaks about honoring, honoring your father and your mother. And what does it really mean to honor? Um, that's what I'd like to take a look at with you here today is, first of all, what does it mean to honor? And more importantly, what would it be like if we were to be in a space of honor and an energy field of honor? Um, and how would that play out for us as an individual? How would it play out with our families and those we share our lives with? And then how would it play out if we honored one another within our world? So let's do that. Let's take a look at these three aspects. First of all, what does it mean to honor? Let's start with the fourth commandment from the Hebrew text. This is the New Revised Standard Version. In Exodus 20, 12, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So that is the Hebrew text. And how is it that we could look at this information from a spaciousness of a spiritual commitment? And what is the energy behind that? And, and how is it important to us? I have a story that I'd like to share with you regarding this fourth commandment. And uh, when I was preparing to go to seminary at Unity Institute, we had several classes to take, which were called SEE courses. And that SEE stood for Spiritual Education and Enrichment. And they were to help prepare us for the courses that we'd be taking in the seminary. One of the courses I needed to take was called Overview of the Hebrew Scriptures, and it was taught by Reverend Don Jennings. Now, Don Jennings looked exactly like my dad. My dad had passed when I was 18 years old, and he had been a Lutheran minister of a Missouri Synod denomination. 
And um, Don Jennings was the spitting image of my father. Everything that he did reminded me of him. He acted like my dad. He spoke like my dad. He even leaned over and picked up a piece of candy off of the ground that he had, had dropped. And he did it just exactly like my dad would have. And it was interesting that he was the one that was teaching me about the Hebrew scriptures. Because my father, being a Lutheran minister, I was born in um, in church, practically. Um, I, I lived in the parsonage, which was right next to the church. I played between the church and the parsonage. And um, I was in church every single Sunday. And so in the journey of my faith's evolution, I had begun to question um, how a loving God would send people who he created to hell to burn forever. And in the quest of understanding how that would all fit together, um, I had to take my Lutheran faith and just set it aside. Not that I dismissed it, but I just needed to set it aside to explore what actually is happening here with a source that gives us life. And, and how is it that um, it can love us at a level that is incomprehensible, the agape loving level, and, um, and, and what is it that we've believed about this God that seems to not make sense? So as I went to college, I set aside my Lutheran faith and um, I explored for a, a deeper, more abiding truth that felt like in my soul, in my heart, that it resonated as true. So um, my father had passed when I was 18 years old and I didn't really get a sense of resolution of with my dad around his faith and um, that which he taught me and the Hebrew Bible and, and the belief systems that came from that. So here I am in seminary or getting ready to go to seminary myself and this person is teaching me the Hebrew text and he looks exactly like my dad. In the process of learning about the Hebrew text, it came alive for me again. It came alive for me new, in a new way, in that I understood that I could look at the, the texts of the Bible and the, the scriptures of the Bible and look at the meaning underneath the, the scripture that have relevance to my life today. And um, in unity, we call that a metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, a literally looking beyond the physical, metaphysical, beyond the physical to the energy and the essence and the, the spiritual content of the lesson beneath it. So as you would imagine in my course with Don Jennings, um, he gave me a scripture to metaphysically interpret. And that verse he was sharing out, he gave all of us a different one. And um, he, my name came up and he said, Kristen, uh, metaphysically interpret Exodus 20, 12. And so I wrote that down. It was at the end of class. And when I got home, I looked up the text. And as I read it, I started to cry. And I want to share with you that Exodus 20, 12 was about honoring your father and your mother. And here I'd had such a journey. My parents got divorced when I was 11 and uh, my dad kind of disappeared out of my life when I was 11 and my mom got remarried. My stepdad was um, physically abusive. And so there was so much that had happened in my journey with my parents and there was a lot of pain associated with it, a lot of difficulty. And here I was being given this scripture that was saying to honor my father and my mother and potentially for my stepfather, even though the journey I'd had had been quite tumultuous. And um, it was a cathartic experience for me, but a blessing for me indeed, because it gave me a chance to recognize that my parents did the very best they could. They brought to me the highest truth they knew. They gave to me the very best that they could give me. They clothed me, they housed me, they gave me food and a safe shelter to, to grow up in. And although it was not perfect and there were places where I wish things had been a little better, they had done the best they could. And if they could have done better, they would have. I am, I'm certain of that, that they tried to give me the best that they knew. And in this scripture, it, 
uncoded all of that. It, it detangled all of the energy that I was holding about my parents. And it gave me the opportunity to share with my class when I came back to metaphysically interpret the honoring of my father and my mother and the journey that I'd gone through. Um, it gave me a chance to detangle all of the energy that I was actually holding current time about past times. And in that detangling, um, one of my fellow students in, sem in SEE course gave me this beautiful piece of art. And you can see that there are three separate entities inside of that, all surrounded by gold. And um, what they told me was the past is gone and what has been created from that past is beautiful. That my life is beautiful that who we are is beautiful, and that somehow all of it is encased in a grace, in a space, in, in a light of, of honor, because it was what it was, and it was necessary to bring forth the person who I am today. And it has brought forth the person that you are today. Your parents have brought forth you. And literally we stand on their shoulders of what they learned to reach higher and to reach for a greater understanding and a deeper embodiment of love. And that is the gift that they gave to us to have an opportunity to A, be alive, to be on the planet, to have an opportunity to, to use our eyes and our heart and our minds and our souls in a way that will give life and honor to this world. So I in interpreted that um, what it means to honor someone, I looked up the definition of it, and it says to regard or treat with admiration and respect. And also to give special recognition to or confer honor upon someone or something. Another interpretation also means to fulfill an obligation or to keep an agreement. So all of this kind of blended together to give me a sense that who I was was created by the, perp by the people who gave me an opportunity to live on this planet and that by honoring that, it detangles my energy. It allows the energy of gratitude and love to move through me to my parents in, in a thankfulness for giving me the chance to be alive on this earth and um, giving me a chance to fulfill my own potential. So how could a commitment to honor play out for us and how could it impact our family? I was visiting another family most recently, and there was an experience of a lack of respect from the sons to the father. And it was really obvious and kind of hard to witness. And um, then I could see that same lack of respect that the grandsons had for the sons. And it replicated that same energy that the sons had for the father. It had just been handed down from generation to generation. You see, we live and we learn. And we learn what we live. We learn when we witness our parents interacting with their parent in a certain way. And we learn from them and it carries down into the generations that follow. What we choose to give to our sons and our daughters, they give back to us and they give to their children. So it's giving and receiving in this sense, in this light is really the same thing. What we give to our parents, we teach our children to give to us. And Therefore, if we don't give honor, we're teaching our children not to honor us. And more importantly, we're teaching our children to live in an energy field of, of, of shutdown, of tanglement, of dis, dis less than, less than um, love. And it hands itself down from generation to generation. So how could a commitment, how could a spiritual commitment to honor 
play out for our families if we decided to love, if we decided to forgive, and literally give joy, to give honor, to give appreciation for that which has given us life. And then our children learn that from us. And then they give that to their children. And if we are able to do that within our own families, within our own bodies, within our own families, how would this play out for the world? This is our first social commandment, our first social commitment of how we are relating with one another. How do we see and how do we honor one another in our world today? In this day with so many platforms of social media that we can interact with, in, in the store, in traffic, or in, in any interaction that we have with another, what is the predominant energy field that we are bringing into the encounter? Think about that for a moment. Think about your own energy and what you're bringing to the encounters that you have with another. Our encounters with one another are becoming even more sacred as the the world has worked through the pandemic of the COVID experience. And so we're having to look at how we are with one another and recognize that our energy that we bring into an interaction is coloring that interaction. So in our day of social media, it seems important to note this. Can we make a commitment to basically treat each other well, to be kind with one another, to bring in a level of respect and honoring of the rights and the dignity and the worth of every single human being we come into contact with? Can we treat them with a level of courtesy? And most importantly, not bring harm or hurt to another on a physical or an emotional level. What we give is what we receive. This new spiritual commitment is to be aware of what we're giving because giving and receiving are really one. So, I invite you as you go forth from this time here together today, to remember the energy of honor, to remember that within your own heart space with your parents, to find a space of honor for them for giving you life, to detangle any energies that may be less than honor and and to shift those into a state of giving gratitude for being. And then can you embody that in a way that will allow your children and your grandchildren to learn that from you? And then, can you take it into your everyday existence, into your next tweet, into your next response, into your next text, into your next phone call, into your next moment of standing in line and allowing somebody to maybe get in ahead of you or, or to allow spaciousness, kindness, consideration, I love and honor and bless you. I'm grateful to have a moment with you. I'm grateful to have a chance to connect with you in an energy of love, respect, and gratitude. Namaste.